All right, so now that we've kind of mastered how to factor from a long time ago, we've mastered the completing the square idea, which you're rarely going to use, and you've mastered the quadratic formula, which we just conquered on our test, we're going to talk about some applications of these quadratic methods. So everything's on the table for this section. What we're going to do here is kind of relate some old stuff with this new stuff. Here's, here's an example of what I'm talking about. This should look pretty familiar to you from chapter 10, something like that. Do you remember how to solve a problem like that? We would. We'd isolate the square root. So all that stuff, we're now just going to put it together. Here's going to be our steps for this whole section. The first thing you're going to do after you set up your problem, when you take a look at it, if you have something squared equals a number, that, that, that's checking. That's the first thing you check. If you have something squared equals a number, C is a constant there. Take a square root of both sides of the plus and minus. That's the easier problem. That was, uh, we had a couple of those on our test. If you have that, take a square root. Of course, with the plus and minus. That, that honestly, folks, is going to be a rare case. You're rarely going to see that thing in this section. What you're going to see is stuff like this in that section. So, what's the idea on how to do these problems or how to do other problems? The first thing you want to do is set this up so that you have ax squared plus bx plus c equals zero. So basically, get everything on one side, get rid of any square roots you see, get rid of any parentheses you see, make it somehow into this. So if you don't have this, make that. So if you have this, great, you're done. If you don't have this thing, so I'll, I'll say this, if not, Make your problem into this. Why would we want to make a problem into this? What do you think? What works with this? Quadratic. Quadratic works with this. What else works with this? <coughs> completing the square does. We're not going to really use that, but there's one. Other, there's three options. Quadratic formula, completing the square, which you mentioned, and the last one? Factoring. Hey, sometimes factoring is way easy, right? I mean, don't forget about factoring. So you're going to make it into this, and the reason why we do that is because we now have three options, only two of which we're actually going to use. The first thing you're going to do is try to factor. How long are you going to spend trying to factor? Ten seconds. About ten seconds. If you can't do it in ten seconds, then you move on to the quadratic formula. So try to factor. If you can't, can't means it takes longer than 10 seconds or it's really hard to factor, then don't waste your time on it. Just go to the quadratic formula. So if you can't, then you're going to use the quadratic formula. That's our idea. If it's set up like this for you, that's awesome. Take a square root with a plus or minus, we've already mastered that. If it's not set up like this, you've got to make it ax squared plus bx plus c equals zero because we have two options there. We can either factor it if it's really easy, 10 seconds or less, or we can use a quadratic formula which works every single time. You guys ready for this stuff? Let's go ahead and let's backtrack to this. This is actually chapter 10, that stuff, it's chapter 10. So how in the world are we going to solve this problem First thing we need to do is, I think you guys already said it, but what would we do here? Well, we can't factor oh, that because we don't have it in this form yet. We, don't, we have to get rid of any square roots or parentheses that we see. How do you get rid of a square root? Yeah, before you square everything, which you can't, you can't just do it here, you can't just square all this stuff, that doesn't work. You gotta get the square root by itself. Do you remember that? Now, you do have some options here. Be, be a little bit smarter than the problem. Okay. One option, which a lot of you guys are thinking of right now, I'm reading minds, kind of cool, is a lot of you are thinking, oh, I'm going to add 3 and subtract x. Are you thinking that? Yeah. If you're thinking that, that's one way to do it. However, you're going to deal with a lot of negatives there. Otherwise, could I add this whole thing to both sides? Mm -hmm. That would make this positive, right? Mm -hmm. 
instead of having that negative. I don't want to screw up any, any negative. So maybe get that, if it's, if it's a minus square root, maybe add that to both sides. That way, when you look at it, I have x minus 3 equals the square root of x minus 1. Are you guys with me on that? Could you do it the other way? Sure. You know what? It really doesn't matter. If you, if you, did, if you did this over here, you'd have uh, negative square root of x minus 1 equals 3 minus x. <coughs> Is that still going to work? Yes, no? The only thing you got to be careful of is if you square this side and you square this side, which what we're, that's what we're about to do, this square also takes care of that negative. Do you see it? Because you're squaring something. It's going to become positive. This becomes x minus 1 equals 9 minus uh, 6x plus x squared. That's what you'd have in this case. So far, so good. So if you did it this way, no problem. You could do that. However, it's probably a little bit easier to see if we just add this one to both sides, make everything kind of nice looking like we like to see it, and then deal with it. Now, if this was a plus, look at the board here real quick. If that was a plus, would I want to move this one? No, I'd want to move all other stuff. But if that's a minus, yeah, add it. That's probably the best way to do it. Now, in order to get rid of a square root, I kind of showed you, but this is old stuff. We're going to square both sides. This is what was on your test. We'd say, oh, okay, you know what? I'm going to square this side because I know squaring a square root is an inverse operation, but I also need to square this side. So on the right-hand side, I get x minus 1, no problem. On the left-hand side, I'm not just going to get x squared plus 9 or x squared minus 9. I've got to distribute that. I'm going to have the x squared. I'm going to have what? Minus 6x. Do you all see where the minus 6x is going to come from? Mm -hmm. And then I'm going to have plus 9. Minus 6x because you have x minus 3 and x minus 3 again. And then we're going to do x squared minus 3x minus 3. That's a minus 6x and then plus 9 at the very end. You still okay so far? Are you sure? What now? What now? We don't have any like terms. We don't have any like terms. Like terms have to be on the same side of the equal sign, so we don't have any of those. Subtract x. Good. What? Set it, Lupe says set it equal to zero because what we want, we want this, right? This is the way factoring works, and this is the way the quadratic formula works. So set equal to zero means this isn't good enough yet. I need to subtract the x. x squared minus 7x plus 9 equals negative 1. Good. And yes, very good, Melissa. And then lastly, we do what now? Yeah. This isn't good enough yet either. We want it equal to zero. That's the only way this stuff actually works. You have to have some expression in order equal zero for you to factor or for you to use a quadratic formula. That's it. So yeah, we're going to add the one. We got x squared minus 7x plus 10 equals zero. I need a show of hands if you're okay making it that far, ladies and gentlemen. Okay, so great. Ideas are coming back from the past chapters. In this, this is a chapter 10 idea. Chapter 10 said, if you have a square root, man, you need to get rid of that. So set everything on one side, set the square root on the other side, so you isolate the square root, just like we did here. To get rid of a square root, you square both sides. Not just the right side, but also the left side in this case. Here, square root and square inverse operations are gone. We get the x minus 1. Here, we square everything out and distribute it. We get x squared minus 6x plus 9. We isolate everything on one side and zero on the other side so that we can factor. If that doesn't work in 10 seconds, you try the quadratic formula. So, what are we going to try first? Why don't you try to factor that? I'll give you 10 seconds. Do it on your own. Don't say it out loud. Just factor that if you can. This is a diamond problem, yes? Does it have an extra step in it? No, those are the ones you might want to try to factor. If you had a number up front, you might just skip it all together. Just, I don't want to deal with that. It's too hard. Quadratic formula. So off to the side, you do negative 7, you do 10. You spend 10 seconds trying to find that. Can you think of a couple numbers that add to negative 7 and multiply to positive 10? Hey, that was less than 10 seconds, right? That's great. If you, if you spent 10 seconds trying to do that and you couldn't figure it out, then you just move on. Go to the quadratic formula. You, it'll, I promise you, if you do the quadratic formula correctly and simplify it, it will work out the same way. x minus 2. 
x minus 5 equals 0. Hey, are we done? No. We are almost done, though. What are you going to do now? Zero product property. Yes, that's right. So we're going to do the x minus 2 equals 0. x minus 5 equals 0. We set both of those equal to 0. We add 2. We add 5. We get x equals 2 and 5. Ladies and gentlemen, raise your hand. Feel okay with this so far? Are you all comfortable with getting the 2 and the 5? Yes. Now, one situation that can occur. Remember how I told you you have to check your work in this stuff? You have to check your work in this stuff. You have to. Here's why. If I plug in a 2, I get 2. No problem. I get 2 minus 1. 1. So, well, what did I say here? 2? Minus 1 is 1. Okay. So, 2 minus 1 is 1. Minus 3 is... Zero. No. <laughs> <laughs> Zero. <laughs> it work. Two. Oh. Two minus one minus three. Is this equal to zero? No. No. That that one doesn't work. Try the five. Yeah. Okay. You get five minus two. Minus 3, yes, that one does work. The 5 is the only one that actually works here. So remember how we can create those false solutions sometimes with this? Do you remember that? In the chapter 10, we could, could, could create false solutions. We did that. You need to check your work. You must do that. Check it, plug it into your original equation, see if it still works. The 2 didn't, the 5 did. We're okay on that. So this section is all about remembering some old stuff. This is going to bring you way back, some old times. Yeah. Uh, Instead of factoring, if we would have used the quadratic formula, would we have gotten the same answer? Yeah, yeah absolutely. Formula. Okay. The quadratic formula and factoring are the well, they're not the same thing, but they will give you exactly the same answers no matter what. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, in that case, this action is creating a false solution for us right here. This, this will have these solutions no matter what you do. Do you remember it? Yeah, you're going to find that. You, mem you remember. Remember. <laughs> remember. We don't want to. No, you don't. You probably just pounded the, after that test. Pounded that out of your head because you didn't think you were going to use it again. All this stuff comes back at us. All this stuff. So in this example, the first thing we realize is that, firstly, do we have an equation? Yes. yes. What can you do with equations and fractions? Get rid of the fractions. What do you need in order to get rid of fractions? What is your, oh, can you find your LCD? Mm -hmm. That's bringing back some old stuff. What's your LCD here? I'll give you a hint. I gave this hint to you in chapter 7. Your LCD is going to be somewhere in your problem, most likely. Here, here's x minus 1, here's x, here's x times x minus 1. That is your LCD. It includes both of those things. So is this over there? Yeah. This one? Yeah. This whole thing? That's our LCD. Are you with me, folks? Mm -hmm. What do you do with the LCD? Do you find a common denominator or eliminate denominators? Eliminate. And how do you do that? Is this something over something or just the something? The something, just the something. Do so we take the LCD, we multiply it on every single fraction. So here, x times x minus 1. And here, x times x minus 1. And here, x times x minus 1. And this is the cool part. Because we have an equation, you can do this. It's multiplying both sides by the same expression. That's legal to do with equations. That just means multiply every single term by the same expression. In this case, the LCD, x times x minus 1. And then cancel stuff out. That's the best part. Because we get to eliminate all of our denominators. If you do this and you still have denominators, you've done something wrong. You should eliminate all of them. Uh, let's work on the easy side first. What happens over here? What are we going to get out of this whole thing? Five. That's great. I love that. I love five. Five, yeah, it's gone. 
How about over here, ladies and gentlemen? What do I simplify out of this expression? X minus 1. Now, slow down. Be careful. What do I have over here? 2x squared. Where are you getting the square? Because it's 2x times x. Okay, so I do have the x. I'm going to write it out so you see where that's coming from. We have the x, we have the 2x. Then I'm going to have a minus sign. I'm going to have a minus sign. And I do not, just like in chapter 7, I do not want you to distribute this in your head. Not right now. Because what you have up here, after you simplify your, you see your x's, right? You see your x's. What do you have up here is, what, what do you have? What's the x minus 1. Okay, I like it. What else? Uh-huh. Okay, by a show of hands, how many people feel okay getting down to that far, ladies and gentlemen? Good deal. I hope so, because that's that's old stuff, right? Listen, if you're if you're not really watching here, this is one of those things where you're, you're gonna make a mistake on a test if you're not I'm gonna give you one of these on a test, just like this. But if you're not really watching, you're gonna make a mistake here. This one, everyone's going to be getting 2x squared. That's not the problem. But I need you to really trust me on this thing. This, you're going to want to do it a certain way. Here's how you're going to want to do it. You're going to want to put a bracket around this. Now, here's why. When you are looking at this, this is subtracting this entire expression that's being multiplied, correct? So what this is doing, this is going to be subtracting this thing. Check it out. Look at the board here real quick. You're going to get x squared, right? You're going to get plus 2x minus x. That's plus x. Do you follow the plus x? And then you're going to get minus 2. Yes? If you don't have a parentheses, if you don't have that big bracket, if you don't have that big bracket, that's what you get, right? However, think about it. You're subtracting this whole expression. What's that going to do to all these signs? Change. It's going to change every sign. You need to have that bracket down. Do you see it? Mm -hmm. Okay, that's important. That's really important why you need this. It's subtracting this whole expression. Don't distribute your head. You're never going to get it. you got to make sure you write that out. Make sure you have a bracket around it. That negative is going to distribute and change all of those signs. Minus x squared. But then look at it. It's going to be minus x. And it's going to be plus 2 equals 5. Mm -hmm. Give a little head nod if you're okay on that one. That's the biggest point of probably today, and that's old stuff, but I need to make sure you, you really get that. Okay, continue on. What are we going to do now? Yeah, now we have some like terms. I see an x squared and an x squared here, so I'm going to get how much? Minus x plus 2 equals 5. True or false? Right now I should try to factor. True or false? No, we've actually done... Uh, we're working on step two. In step one, we couldn't do that. But step two, we're going to try to make this a squared plus bx plus c equals zero. The last thing we need to do is what? So x squared minus x minus three equals zero. That's how I want to see it. We get everything on one side. We have zero on the other side. This allows us to either a factor or b do quadratic formula. We don't want to do completing the square. It takes too long. So, the first thing you're going to try to do is, what is it? Try to factor. Well, I want you to spend 10 seconds, don't say anything, spend 10 seconds trying to factor it. It's a good habit to get into. Negative 1, negative 3, trying to add to negative 1 and multiply to negative 3. Can you think of anything? No. Nope. No, I can't either. Because the 2 and the 1, that, that's going to multiply to 2. That doesn't really work. So, if we cannot factor, what are you going to do? Okay, so, A, folks, is how much? 1. Everybody, B is how much? 1. That's not everybody. Come on, play long. Oh, good. You played long twice. How about C? <laughs> So recapping, hey, look it, this is old stuff. Using LCD to get rid of fractions, old stuff. This using parentheses, that's old stuff. I don't know if I showed that to you a long time ago, but this is technically old stuff. Put a bracket around it, distribute it. Do you see the reason for the bracket, folks? Yep. Mm -hmm. You need to have that bracket because it is going to change every sign. 
then combine like terms, get everything on one side, zero on the other side, try to factor it, it didn't work. Use your A, B, and C to set up the quadratic formula. We're going to go through this kind of quickly. The quadratic formula says x equals negative b plus or minus radical b squared minus 4 times a times c. All over 2a. You set up the quadratic formula by not doing anything in your head. You simply plug in numbers. So the quadratic formula, hopefully you memorize that. It's negative b plus or minus radical b squared minus 4 times a times c all over 2 times a. How many people have memorized the quadratic formula? Good for you. Did the song help you? No. no. I heard some of you humming it. You're going to be humming it a while. Then you start doing some math. No math here, just plugging in the quadratic formula. Negative negative 1 is 1. Plus or minus the square root of negative 1 squared is 1. Then you have minus negative 12. Do you see that we have minus negative 12? We don't just have minus 12. That's, that's a sign error I was talking about earlier. Over 2, we get x equals 1 plus or minus the square root 1 minus negative 12. How much is that? 12. Oh, <laughs> We're adding, right? One plus two. Trust me, if you if you struggle with this, use your calculator. It will do that for you. Okay, it's fine. Can you simplify any of that? Can you simplify any of that? No. So the only thing I want you to do, write your two solutions. You have one plus root thirteen over two, one minus root thirteen over two. That's as good as we can do. How many people feel okay with, with this right here? Okay, we're going to do, uh, I'll let you do one on your own here real quick. And we'll end there today. Actually, do you need one of these on your own or do you feel okay with it? Seriously? You know what? Actually, the one I'm going to give you is exactly the same. So I'm not going to give you another one. That'd just be, that'd be a waste of time, uh, honestly. Uh, I think, it, check that one out again. Just make sure this is, this is the key part. The bracket right there, I've said like five times, 500 times already. But the bracket right there is a key part. Use your LCD. Um, make sure that we, we multiply everything by the LCD and then use your bracket before you distribute. Okay, here's the one we're going to do. Wait a second. Is that a quadratic? No. no. Why not? Well, it's not x, x squared. X to the fourth. X to the fourth. Yeah, that's not x squared. So you, you might think, well, wait a second, Mr. Leonard. That doesn't look like anything what we've been talking about so far. You're right, it doesn't. However, here's what we're going to do. We are going to trick this problem into thinking that it's a quadratic. Okay, we're going to trick it. You know you trick math problems, did you? Yeah, you silly little math problem, I'm tricky right now. <laughs> Here's the idea. Whenever you have something here and something here, what, what you're going to try to write is this thing as this thing squared. You're going to be making a substitution. I'll explain that again because I saw some very confused books out there. When you look at a problem like this and it's not already a quadratic, if you have a quadratic, great. You know what to do with that. You, you take a, a square root if you have something equals a number. Or you use factoring or use quadratic formula. If not, if you have something weird looking like this, you're going to look right here at the middle term. What you're going to try to do is write this term as your middle term squared. So for instance, is this, this thing to the second power? Mm -hmm. X squared squared. Is that the same thing as x to the fourth? Mm -hmm. yes. Okay. 
and you're going to put your middle thing in parentheses. Are you still okay? Yeah, you might be more why, why? Why would you why are we gonna do that? Well check it out. If I can write, you, you believe me that this is x squared squared, right? Mm -hmm. And now you have the same thing here and the same thing here, only this thing is to the second power. Mm -hmm. the second power. You you with me folks? Mm -hmm. Here's what you do. Whenever you can do that, and you have the same thing here and here, only this one's being squared and this one is not which that's, that's the case, this one's being squared, that one's not, you can make a substitution. You just let this inside part equal some dummy variable, like y. Equal some dummy variable. In this case, here's what you can do. Wait, instead of x squared, what am I going to put? Y. y. Let's put y. What we did here is we, we translated this into, well, some expression and some expression squared. Then we let a dummy variable take the place of that. So instead of x squared, I can put, what was it again? Y. This would be y to the what power? Minus 5 times what? Y squared. Minus 36. Check it out. Instead of x squared, I'm going to write y. Instead of x squared, I'm going to write y. So instead of x squared, I write, instead of x squared squared, I'm going to write y squared. Raise your hand if you can follow that. Feel okay with it. All right. Why would we do this? No pun intended. Why would we do this? Is that a quadratic now? Could you factor that? You could try. Could you use quadratic formula on that? Sure. Actually, that one's factorable. Spend 10 seconds factoring this. Just do me one favor. What, please watch on the board right here. When you factor this, you can. You're going to get 9 and 4. When you factor this, are you going to have x? No. no. What, what variable are you talking about? Y. Ah. You actually have y minus 9 and y plus 4. So y minus 9 equals 0 and y plus 4 equals 0. So y equals 9 and y equals negative 4. Now wait a second, this is the last thing I'll leave you with here. What was our original variable? X squared. No, it wasn't x squared. Our original variable was x. The original variable was x. It just happens to be squared into the fourth power there, right? What do we end with? Y. That's a problem. Here's why it's a problem. What's the largest power in your polynomial up there? Four. That means you should have how many solutions? Four. You should have four solutions. How many do we have? Two. Two. You're not done yet. You start with x's, make sure we translate it to y's. You need to translate back to x's. So in, in other words, let's check it out. If y equals x squared, and I have y equals 9, instead of y, what could I write? X squared. X squared. X squared. Well, instead of y, I could write? y is x squared, right? Yeah. y is x squared. So instead of y equals 9, I could make that x squared equals 9. Instead of y equals negative 4, I can make that x squared equals negative 4. Can you solve x squared equals 9 and x squared equals negative 4? Mm -hmm. yes. How are you going to do that? Square Square. What do you need? When you take a square root, what do you have? What do you put? You must have plus or minus. If you do a plus or minus here, you get x equals, follow me along here real quick, square root of 9 is how much? 3 and negative 3. Square root of negative 4 is? 2i. Please give me an i, right? Give me an i. 2i and negative 2i. There's our four solutions as we're going to have today. Okay, so we're working on making substitutions because what we're trying to do is change these things called quartic equations into quadratic equations because honestly, quadratic equations and linear equations are the only things we know how to solve in this class. There's no general way to solve that for us. There are general ways to solve it. But once in a while, we come up with a unique situation where we can trick the problem into thinking that it is quadratic. That's what the substitution does for us. And the whole kind of premise of this is you're trying to write this term as this term squared. If you can, it'll work. If you can't, it won't work. Are you with me on that? Mm -hmm. So in our case here, we go, oh yeah, yeah, all right. What we're going to try to do is look here and see if this, this piece squared equals this piece. So you look here, 
square it and see if it's still equal. Is it still equal? Yeah. Yeah, so that, that means it's going to work for us. So this is still x to the fourth minus 7. And I'm going to put x squared in parentheses just because I'm going to substitute for it in just a second. I know wherever I see the parentheses x squared, I'm going to replace that with a dummy variable. And the dummy variable we typically use is y. You don't want to use x again. The reason why you don't want to use x is because your, your original variable is x, right? If you, if you still use x is here to make your substitution, it's going to look like you've solved it, when in fact you're going to have more to do after this. How many people made it this far? Okay. So we're making a substitution at this point. We're saying, all right, that's x squared. This is x squared squared. So we're writing this as x squared squared. Now, what are we going to do after, after this? What's our next step to do? Right, what is y? Factor. We're not factoring. Mm -hmm. Y minus 7, y minus 1.2. Okay, so y it's, instead of the x squared, you're replacing that with y. y. That's what you're doing. So it's a substitution. It's not that you're, you're removing anything. You're substituting. So the next step, kind of important step, we say, all right, we're going to let x squared equals y. So x squared here, we're going to let this be... What? Does that square go away? No. No. This part, we're just replacing it with what it equals. Look at x squared is y. So this little piece is now y. That square is still there. Minus, is this 7 still here? Mm -hmm. Sure. That's why it's not in parentheses. I'm not removing that piece. Is this x squared still there? No. How much is that? Y. Minus 144 equals zero. That's how you make your substitution. We write this as x squared squared. So whenever pretty much you see an x to the fourth in this class, that's what you're going to be doing. Okay, you're going to be substituting this in. So we have x squared squared, x squared. Both of these x squareds right here become y's. So this becomes a y squared. This becomes a seven. Y you going to feel okay with that. Yes? yes. All right. So why it doesn't have a parenthesis no more? We don't need one. We actually didn't even need one here. But I'm putting that around there to show you that's what we're substituting in for. So we're, we're just putting this right here to say, okay, whatever's in here, my x squared, I'm going to treat that as a substitution. Those two pieces I'm taking out of the equation and I'm replacing them with y. We don't need this. The, you could have it here, but it wouldn't make a difference. 7 times y is 7y. Hey, what would you do after this? Checking that you back here in five seconds and not use the corner. 10 seconds, 10 seconds, but are you guys awake today? Are you with me on this? Are you sure? If not, ask some questions. That's fine. That's fine, but I need you here with it. All right. So you answer me. What would you try to do now? You try to factor. If you couldn't factor, what would you do? Yeah, you could do quadratic. Uh, in fact, if you tried quadratic here, it's going to work out for you. It, it would work out for you, uh, but this is factorable. It's not... I mean the easiest thing to factor in the world, but you could do it. You have negative seven on the new on the top. You have negative one forty four on the bottom. The things that work here are negative sixteen negative nine. and positive nine. Positive nine. Yeah. yeah. Oh. Yeah. Negative sixteen and positive nine. That adds to negative seven. Yeah. Yes. That multiplies to negative one forty four. So we're gonna do y minus sixteen. Y plus nine equals zero. You still okay? What now? Cool, all right. So y minus 16 equals zero. Y plus nine equals zero. That's not a problem because we can solve this pretty easily. We know we're going to add 16 to both sides. We'll get y equals 16. We're going to subtract nine from both sides. We'll get y equals Negative 9. Don't lose your signs there. We get positive 16. We get negative 9. Uh, on, on a show of hands, how many feel, people feel okay getting down all the way to there? Yes, yes. Guys on the left-hand side, yes or no? Yes? Okay, good. Are we done? No. What variable did you start with? X squared. Well, we start with, with x. We start with x. Now, the variable isn't x squared. That, that's not a variable. The variable is x here. Yes, it's being raised to the fourth power and second power, but the variable is x. What variable did you end with? This is why it's pretty important to make sure you change variables from here to here and make sure you keep that variable to the very end. Don't, don't automatically, when you factor, when you factor something, that doesn't automatically change back to x, does it? 
No, it doesn't automatically go, oh, I factored something, X. No, it doesn't, that doesn't really happen. We have, to, we have to change it back ourselves at this point. You see, we start with X's, we end with Y's. That's never a good thing. We want to end with X's. We want to solve for that variable. So this is kind of like a double substitution. You're substituting in one time to change from X to the fourth into Y squared, and X squared into Y. That's what you're doing. But then at the very end, you have to substitute back in to change your Y's back into X's. So tell me, how much is Y equal to? I know it equals 16 and negative 9, but how much is the Y? What's that expression? So substitute that back in. Don't forget to sub back in to find X. So down here we go, okay, well I know that Y equals 16, however, Y is the same thing as X squared. So I use that statement to say instead of Y equals 16, I'm going to have X squared equals 16. Can you follow that? Mm -hmm. Yes? Mm -hmm. And over here, we'll do the same thing. If y equals negative 9, that means that x squared equals negative 9, because that was our direct substitution right there. That's, that's exactly what we did. We said, instead of having x squared, I'm putting y. Now, instead of y, I'm putting x squared. I'm changing it back to what I need. That's what I'm doing here. So far, so good? Solve the rest. Okay, I said solve the rest. How do you solve the rest? What are you supposed to do to get rid of a square? You square it again? Or you square root it? Like that? Oh, plus and minus. Why do we need a plus and minus? Good, and you know what? Guess what? If you have two solutions here and two solutions here, how many solutions are you going to get? Bingo. That's what you should get, right? You're supposed to get that. So you need a plus and minus, otherwise you only get two solutions when in fact you should have all four. Of course, a square and a square root, those things are gone. I get x equals, uh, what's the square root of 16, folks? Four. So I get 4 and I get negative 4, plus 4 and minus 4, or positive and negative 4. Over here I'm going to get x equals, how much is the square root of negative 9, please? 3i and, Three I and perfect. Perfect. Would you raise your hand feel okay with what we just talked about, that, that example? Now, I do have to say one little statement here. If this isn't factorable, and you have to use the quadratic formula, you're going to end up getting two solutions, and x squared equals those solutions. However, it gets kind of nasty, because check it out. If, for instance, if you have y equals, um, I'm making this up off the top of my head, okay? 1 plus or minus square root of 13 over 2. Let's say that's y. Well, then you say, oh, well, if y equals that, you still need to substitute back in for x squared, don't you? And then you'd still have to take a square root of both sides with a plus and minus. That's how some of your answers could look here. Okay, that's kind of nasty, but that's a plus and minus a square root of negative 1 plus and minus square root of 13 over 2. Okay, that is, that is a solution. These are numbers. They're just crazy looking numbers. It's possible, but I just want you to see that most of these for us are going to be factorable. All right, so you'll be able to factor it right here. So if you can't factor it, spend a little bit more time. Sometimes you might not be able to, then you get something like that. Okie dokie. Okie dokie. Now, let's look at our next example, this uh, x plus 4 squared. Do you see a similarity between this one and this one? A similarity. Not, I know there's no x to the fourth up there, but do you see that in this case, we broke this down to have something squared, and then that same something right over here. Did you see that? Do we have that over here? There's actually two options for you in this case. You could spend some time and foil this all out, and then distribute that negative, and then combine like terms and solve it like that. You could, but you're going to spend a lot of time doing that. Uh, especially distributing combined like terms. It's not too hard. However, there's, there's maybe a little better way to do this, or at least a, 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 a way around it, maybe a shortcut if you, if you want to consider a shortcut. Check it out. Whenever you have this, something 
and the same something squared. So an expression over here, an expression raised to the second power, just like we had here. An expression and the same expression raised to the second power, you can make that substitution. You can do a substitution. It just depends on what you have. Here we made a substitution y equals x squared. We can actually make a substitution to change whatever we want, provided it's the same thing here and here, into a dummy variable. So in our case, can you see the substitution we're going to make? Do you see it? Some people don't see it. Over here we had x squared, right? That's the thing in the parentheses. And we had x squared, that's the thing in the parentheses, and we chose x squared to be y. That's what we did, right? We changed it into y. You follow? Here, what's in the parentheses? Do I have it in both places? If I have it in both places, I can change that into what? Whatever I want. A dummy variable, y or z, or just not x. Don't do x because you already have x. So we can still make a substitution. Only this time, the thing inside the parentheses isn't x squared. It just happens to be x plus 4. So we look at our problem. We notice that this and this is the same expression, only this is being squared and this one isn't. That's, that's great. That's actually what we want. So check it out. Instead of x plus 4, what am I going to write, ladies and gentlemen? So can you tell me what this expression becomes, please? Y squared. Okay, great. So that's y, and that's to the second power. This is y. So y squared. Then I have a minus sign. Uh, what goes next, please? Minus y. Minus y, right? Because that's, that's y. And then is the minus 6 still there? Yes. Give me a little head nod if you're okay on that. Where did the x plus 4 go? I got replaced by y. Yeah, we made a substitution. We said x plus 4 is both here and here. I'm just going to call that y for now. Don't do x. you got to do a different variable because we're going to ultimately change that back into x in a little bit. You, you okay with that so far? Are you sure? Substitutions can get kind of tricky for some people, so I, I want to make sure you're all with me before we continue any further. Are you? <laughs> but continue anyway. Uh, do you understand that these two things are exactly the same? Yes. Whenever you have something raised to the second power and the same exact expression uh, by itself off to the side, we can make the same uh, substitution. Now, if this was x to the first, could you do it? I'm sorry, x plus 1, could you do it? No. Definitely not. It has to be exactly the same. But if it is, then you can say, wherever you see that expression, you can put in a dummy variable. Dummy variable means it, it, you're making it up yourself. It really doesn't have to do with part of your original equation. You're substituting it in. So here, x plus 4, I'm not going to write x plus 4 anymore. I'm going to write, look at x plus 4 is y. I'm going to write y. The second power, that doesn't change. This x plus 4, I'm going to write y. That's where these things are going. And then we, may, we go and try to do this problem just like any other quadratic. What are you going to try to do first with this problem right there? Factor, do it. Are we still supposed to get four answers out of it or only two? Well, we'll talk about that in a bit. Hey, ladies and gentlemen, what variable goes right here? X's or Y's? Y's. Y's, because you're still with Y's. So y goes there, y goes there. This is minus 1 on the top, minus 6 on the bottom. The only way you're going to get that is a 3 and a 2. Plus 2 minus 2. Good. Did you factor that appropriately? Cool deal. Now we're going to set each of these equal to 0. Notice how we still haven't changed our variable back. We'll subtract 2 and we'll add 3 respectively. We'll get negative 2 and we'll get y equals 3. I need a show of hands signifying that you understand how we got that far. Feel okay with it? Yes? Okay, good. Now, are we done? No. See, we, we kept this, we, we, on purpose, we kept this y's all the way down because we're not dealing in the same variable that we were. We made a substitution. So we still have y's all the way down to here. Now the idea is, well, you've got to change your y's back into x's. So you tell me, if y equals negative 2 and y equals 3, what's a different expression instead of y? What can I write? It's very similar to this problem. Very, very similar. We, we substituted in x squared. We made it y. 
Okay, and that's what we did. But then at the very end, we knew y was the same thing as x squared. We, we re-substituted. Now here, we, we did the same thing with x plus 4. We called that y, we called that y. But down here, we go, okay, well, these are in y's. I want this in terms of x. So instead of y, I'm going to re-substitute x plus 4. So y is x plus 4. Hey, I got x plus 4 equals negative 2. I got x plus 4 equals 3. Are you done here? What do you do to solve that? Yeah. Now it's, it's not bad. We're going to get x equals negative 6. We'll get x equals negative 1. How many solutions did we get? Two. Why didn't we get 4? Because the highest amount of power on the problem determines how many answers are going to be. Four. Four. Two. That works, right? There's no four over here. There's no x to the fourth. So that means we're only going to get those two solutions. They're both going to work. They're, they're great. Uh, by the way, if you end your problem on your test, you're going to get a problem like that on a test and like this on a test. If you end your problem here, are you going to get the problem right? No. No. Even if you change these back to x's, like if you, if you mistakenly do x, it's still not right. These these don't look anything like those. Or you have to do that resubstitution to find those answers. Now we're going to talk about one more. Then we'll move on to that word problem and be done with our section. So the whole idea is you're looking for a substitution and you're calling that substitution y. You're doing your problem like any other quadratic. It makes it a lot easier for you. But then you have to resubstitute back in to find your actual x values. The last one, we're going to look, it, this one's going to look nasty, all right? It's not going to be any harder than the first ones we just did, but it looks bad. It looks bad. Ooh, see, it looks bad. Cop that one up. But I want you to think of the idea here. Okay, think of the idea. The idea is the idea was this. Please follow along. The idea was you look at this one, right? You write it here and you square it and you see if it's the same thing. If it is, it will work. If it's not, then it won't work. Do you understand? So ultimately, you're looking here and just squaring that number. You're, that's what we did here, too. You look here, square it. Is it the same thing? Absolutely. That's your substitution. So here, we're, we're trying to make that substitution. We're going to try to do the same thing here. So, so watch. You look right here. Their middle term is x to the 1 third, yes? Mm -hmm. x to the 1 third. And you square it. And you look at that and you say, hey, is this thing the same as that thing? Yeah, yeah. What do you do when you have an exponent raised to another exponent? You add, subtract, multiply, divide, give up, I don't know. You multiply. What's one third times two? So are those the same thing? Yeah, yeah those are the same thing. What this means, so look at the similarity, you look in here, you look in here. You're squaring it, you're squaring it. And if they're the same, which they are, you can make a substitution. So we leave this one alone. We write minus 7 x to the 1 third. I'm creating some parentheses because that's going to be our substitution. So you look at your middle term, you write it squared, and you see if it's equal to your first term. Can you give a little head nod if you're okay on that one? Yes, no. Guys on the left-hand side, you okay with that? All right. So is a substitution going to work? Yep. Sure. Let's substitute in. We have it all set up for us. We're going to call not x squared now, not x plus 4, but x to the 1 third equals y. That's a substitution we'll make. And you know what? After we do that, it's going to look so much prettier. So how much is this expression going to be for me, please? Do you see a pattern here? Oh, we see a pattern here. You're going to get y squared. Then you get it minus or plus something y. Then some number equals it. It's going to be a quadratic that you know and love, right? I mean, that's awesome. That's great. 
So we're, we're looking here, we're making a substitution, we're calling that y, and then we factor, or we do quadratic formula, or we do something to solve this quadratic. So can you factor that? You spend 10 seconds trying to factor, don't forget you can factor. That's going to waste a lot of time if you forget. This is going to be x minus 5, x minus 2, right? Oh, okay. Did I make a mistake? This is a very common mistake. The people do this on tests all the time. They go, oh yeah, I have my y's, no problem, I made my substitution, then when they factor, automatically it clicks into x's, because you're used to writing x's, right? You need to be real careful. Watch that. It's just like a, a negative or a positive sign. You need to watch that sign all the way down your equation. If you're dealing with y's here, well, you're not dealing with x's yet. You're still dealing with y's. Still got y's there. So we'd set each of them equal to zero. Solve it. So add five to both sides. Add two to both sides. Not five. We get y equals five, and we get y equals two. What variable did we start with? X. X. What variable did it end with? Y. y. That's not good. That's not good. We still need to substitute back in, just like we did here, just like in our first example. How much is y equal to? Not five and two, but how much is expression y equal to? So x to the one-third equals five. X to the one-third equals, oh man, x to the one-third. Ah. Hey, by the way, what does x to the one-third stand for? Third root of x. A cube root of x to the first power. Yes. A cube root of x to the, what gets rid of a cube root? Another cube root? Or cubing it? Check it out. You could write this differently if you wanted to. You could write this as the cube root of x equals 5. Are you, are you with me on that? If you cube both sides, you're going to get 125 over there. Are you with me? x equals 125, that is your answer. However, right here, you can do the same thing. I want you to see this. Whether you change it back into a cube root or not really doesn't matter. If you cube both sides here, what's 1 third times 3? One, x to the first power. If you look at this, that one-third and that three, those are gone. That's why a cube root and a cube cancel each other out or simplify out. So you're going to get the x, and you're going to get the how much? That's one of them. I'll show you the other way over here. You can choose to do them either way. I, I honestly don't care. So either do this and raise it to the denominator of your fraction. That's fine. Or... If you want to rewrite this as the cube root of x, if that makes more sense to you, more power to you, that's fine. Rewrite that as the cube root of x. You just have to be able to do that, right? Write that from a fractional exponent to a radical. You have to be able to do that. And then realize that, oh, that's a cube root of x. See, I, I just can't have people doing this. Right, is that going to be the same thing? No. No. You have to know that 1 third means a cube root of x. And then say, oh yes, a third power gets rid of a cube root, we get x equals 8. x equals 125 and x equals 8. And those are our two solutions. Oh wait, how, how are we supposed to know we're supposed to get two solutions? Why not two thirds, two solutions? We don't even get one, we get two thirds. Well look at that. What's the numerator of this fraction? That's the power, right? This is the root. That's the power. You're going to get two solutions out of that. Kind of interesting, isn't it? Interesting. Would you like to try one on your own? Sure. You have one opportunity. Remember that Eminem song? You only get one shot. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, no, that's 50 cents. No. <laughs> That's three dimes and four nickels. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> you know what you get if you combine 50 cent and a bandsaw? Two quarters. <laughs> I see how you became a teacher. <laughs> I just made that up. <laughs> I thought it was pretty good. <laughs> oh, 
hopefully 50 cents isn't going to come and shoot me now. Usually it's the other way around. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Okay, so make a nice substitution, change that into a quadratic with a dummy variable of probably y, but just don't forget to change the y back into the x at the very end. Okay, let's come back to our example over here. We have x to the two-thirds minus 5x to the one-third plus 4 equals 0. What we need to do is represent this somehow as a quadratic. And the way you do that, look at your middle term. Write it as something squared. Sorry, write it as that expression squared and see if it equals your first term. If it does, great. You can make a substitution. If it doesn't, then you can't. Here, yes, it does equal one-third to the second power. That's going to give you the two-thirds. I'm going to write my other x to the one-third in parentheses as well because that's going to be my substitution. Write your substitution off to the side there. Show me what you're doing. Make sure you have over here, I'm calling x to the one-third y. You kind of need to show that, otherwise you're just randomly changing letters. Right? You need to show that. That's like your road map. This is what I'm doing. This is where I'm going. This is how I'm going to get back. Then we go, okay, well, if x to the one-third is y, we got y squared minus 5y plus 4 equals zero. Well, that's not bad because we just changed a, actually a radical expression there, right? Fractional exponents or radicals into a quadratic. That's great. Factor it. Make sure you still have that same variable y. Set them both equal to zero by the zero product property. Add the four, add the one, and get y equals four, y equals one. Now, of course, we can't end with y's and we can't lose the fact that we're, we're still dealing with y's right here. Then we go and make our resubstitution. We say, instead of y, I'm going to write what y is equal to. x to the one-third equals 4. x to the one-third equals 1. Now, x to the one-third really means the cube root of x. So we need to take both sides to the third power. Do it here. Change it to a radical if you'd like first. It doesn't really matter to me. But somehow we need a third power on both sides. Make sure you do have it on both sides. It's an equation, in fact, so you have to, once you do one side, you, you got to do the other. And either way, you're going to get an x. You're going to get how much? Yeah, don't give me 12, right? We're not multiplying. We're doing 4 times 4 times 4, that's 64. And we're going to get x equals 1. Those are your two solutions. Raise your hand if you got those two solutions. Good for you, that's fantastic, that's very good. Now, the last thing we're gonna talk about, the last application, do you remember a problem like that? Yeah. Karen and Doug can clean a house and blah, 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 blah. How fascinating. Although, you know what, back when we did this the first time, it was a little different. This was chapter seven. It said, back in, in the first, first time we did this chapter seven, it said, Karen can clean a house in three hours, Doug can clean a house in five hours, how quick could they, they do it together? Do you notice a difference in this problem? This might be actually a little bit more realistic. When people clean houses, usually they do it in teams. Um, they, they say, hey, we're going to go in this, we're going to...
else, you do top story, I do bottom story, you do whatever. I do bathrooms, you do everything else, because uh, bathrooms suck. And, and we can do it together in a certain amount of time. So this is this is what this is saying. Karen and Doug are house cleaning team. They go into houses, it takes them five hours to clean that house together, total. That's how long it takes them. But maybe this is a little bit more realistic. Maybe Karen calls in sick one day. Doug still has to clean the house, right? Or Doug calls in sick one day, Karen still has to clean that house. What we know is that if they do it alone, Karen's a faster house cleaner than Doug is. She can clean the same house one hour faster than Doug. Uh, she, she's pretty quick at it. So the premise is, if they can do it together in five hours, how fast can they do it alone? Let's say one of them calls in sick, how much time do they need to budget to clean that particular house? Do you understand the question? Now, before we even get started with this, we're going to use the same table we did before. Same exact thing. If you look back at chapter 7, you had this on your paper. But before we even start, I want you to think about it. If they're cleaning the house together in five hours, Doug and Karen, are they going to clean it alone faster or slower than five hours? Should, should, there be time, should their time be more than five hours or less than five hours? Less than one person. But less or more, what do you think? Less. less time. So you're thinking that Doug could clean the house in, what, three hours? No. no. Four hours? Yes. Four and a half hours? No. Wait a minute. They clean it together in five hours. That means they're both working, and they're cleaning it in five hours. So you're taking away one of them, and they're cleaning it even faster? No. Does that make sense? No. Okay. They're cleaning it together in five hours. You take away one of them, it should be more than five hours. Six, seven, eight, nine hours. Take away one of them. Either way, it's going to be more than five hours. Do you understand that? Let's say, I mean, you have, if you have kids, if you're, if you're all tag team in the house, it took you two hours. If all your kids go, well, that's a bad, that's a bad example. Maybe kids suck at cleaning houses. They're just throwing something around. But let's say they were good at it. If you took your kids away, is it going to take you two hours still? No, it's take you more time. No, it's going to take you a lot more time. So these, these people should be more than five hours. Do you understand that? Yeah. So when we get our answer, it should be more than five. If you remember what we did from chapter seven, we looked at the total time for the job. Then we looked at the amount of the job per hour. We're going to start with it together because that's the only thing we really have. How fast can they clean this house together? That goes right here. Five hours. Five hours. Okay. How fast can Doug clean the house by himself? The whole thing. One less than Karen. One more than Karen, actually. Karen can clean it one hour faster than Doug. So, so you can represent this two different ways. It doesn't matter. Call one of these things X. Okay, call Karen or Doug X. Because you don't know either of them, do you? I'm going to call Doug X because it seems like an X kind of guy to me. So X. If Doug cleans it in X time, how fast does Karen clean it? Plus one, minus one. Plus one would be she cleans it slower. Oh, okay. Uh, if it takes Doug five hours, it takes her four hours. Not plus one, that would be six hours. X minus one. Are you with me on that? So understand the problem. Understand the problem. Now, this was the key part for you. This was it. This is pretty easy to grasp. They're cleaning it together in five hours. One of them's X, one of them's either X plus one or X minus one. It honestly doesn't matter. You just have to set up the problem appropriately. Are you with me on that? If you had chosen this to be X, Doug would be X plus one. Okay. Now, the per hour. This is the amount of the job they can get done per hour. So here was our example. If the, it takes them five hours to clean this whole house, how much of the, of the job are they getting done after one hour? One fifth. One fifth. Great. If you clean a house in two hours, you're getting half the house clean the first hour, half the house clean the second hour. Are you with me? If it was three hours, you'd get one-third the first hour. I'm not flipping you off here, sorry. Uh, one-third the second hour and one-third the third hour, adding up to the whole house. If it was four hours, a quarter, a quarter, a quarter, or one-fourth, 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 one-fourth. Five hours, a fifth of the house the first hour, clearly. A fifth of the house the second hour, a fifth of the third hour, a fifth of the fourth hour, and a fifth of the fifth hour. That adds up to the whole house. So together is five per hour is one fifth. You just take this number, put it under one. That's how you do it. Remember that? Yes. Take that number, put it under one. So what's this going to be? Not one x. That would be the same thing. One over x. One over x. Sure. Five one over five x one over x. Same idea. What's this one going to be? One over x.
Give me the head nod if you're okay with that. Now, the same idea in chapter 7 holds for this chapter as well. Remember, all we're doing really is using old stuff to conquer, or it's in combination with these uh, quadratic methods to conquer new problems. Here's what it said. Doug per hour plus Karen per hour equals the total time together per hour. Doug per hour plus Karen per hour equals total. It's not this one. It's not Doug's time for the whole house plus Karen's time for the whole house equals together for the whole house. Does not make sense? You're adding up a lot of extra work here. But per hour, it does work. It says how much Doug can get done in an hour plus how much Karen can get done in one hour is equal to how much they can get done together in one hour. So we add that column. We do Doug per hour plus Karen per hour equals together per hour. <coughs> Bless you. Hey, does that look familiar? Mm -hmm. We can do that problem. We can do that. First thing, it's an equation, yes? Mm -hmm. Can you get rid of fractions? Mm -hmm. How do you get rid of fractions? Awesome. Chapter 7 stuff. Multiply your LCD. What is your LCD here? Don't forget that 5. Don't forget the 5. You got a 5. You got an X. And you have an X minus 1. Do you guys see it? 5 yeah. is on the denominator. It counts. Then we take that, multiply that everywhere. 5X, X minus 1. We have 5X, X minus 1. We have 5X, X minus 1. This is the good part. We can cross all this fraction stuff out. So you tell me on this first fraction, please. What do we have left? 5x, 5. 5? X minus 1. Good. X minus 1. That's still in parentheses, yes? Yes. Okay. And then plus, please don't distribute yet. We're going to cross the x minus 1s. The only thing I have left is 5x. And then over here we have, what, what's it going to be over here? X. X minus 1. Perfect. Remember, I don't want you to distribute yet because sometimes you're going to have expressions with minuses in front of them and those must go with those, those expressions. But now we're pretty much home free. We're going to distribute. You're probably going to get a quadratic since that's the section we're in. But we know how to solve that. So here we'll get our 5x minus 5 plus 5x equals x squared minus x. Still okay so far? So the whole key here is doing this thing, honestly. And once you get here, I mean, you should know how to do that. But that's kind of nice. Combine some like terms, we'll get 10x minus 5 equals x squared minus x. Wow, now what now? What are you supposed to do with, with this stuff? So that is equal to Why? What lets you know that? Well, I mean, there's an equal sign, sure. But what? there's a, a term in here that says, I need everything on one side. Yeah, that thing right there. Now, should I move these terms to the left or these terms to the right? Keep your x squared positive. Otherwise, you're going to have a very hard time factoring this. Quadratic formula will work, but the factoring will not. So subtract the 10x. We'll get negative 5 equals x squared minus 11x. We done yet? Oh, add the 5. We get 0 equals x squared minus 11x plus 5. Still okay so far? Good. We done? Dang it. Why? What should you try to do first? How much should you spend time on it? About 10 seconds. If you can't factor it in 10 seconds, you probably can't factor it. Can you factor it? No. And how about the negative 11 and 5? The, the only way you're getting positive 5 is 5 times 1 or negative 5 times negative 1. Neither of those add up to negative 11. So what are you going to use here? Okay, A is 1, B is negative 11, C is 5. If we plug that into our quadratic formula, which we know and love at this point, we're going to get how many solutions here? Well, now here's what this says. If you're going to get two solutions, one of them is probably going to be a positive, and one of them is probably going to be a negative. Can they clean a house in negative time? It would be awesome if you just clean house and go back in time. Hey, I'm going to get younger. Let's clean some houses. <laughs> uh, yeah, that doesn't really work. So we're probably going to only take the positive time. The negative one's not going to work for us. So we're going to do x equals negative, negative 11, 
plus or minus the square root of negative 11 in parentheses squared minus 4 times a times c all over 2 times a. Well, negative, uh, negative negative 11 gives you a positive 11 plus or minus the square root of negative 11 squared. Hopefully you're getting 121 out of that. Minus, how much is 4 times 1 times 5? 1. Over 2. So 121 minus 20, that means you're going to get 11 plus or minus the square root of oh, 101. 2. Yeah. Ask me. Okay, does it have 501? No. Not that I see. Not that I see. Do we have all our work right? Yeah. Okay, well, wait a second. That's not going to work out even for us, and that's okay. Do you have a calculator? Do you have two solutions? Yeah, you really do. Something happened. Check that work for me, would you? Actually, you know what? No, that'll be fine. That'll be fine. I'll, I'll show you why. Uh, first thing, we're going to go ahead and find our x's. You take 11 plus square root of 101 over 2. You take 11 minus square root of 101 over 2. Have you done these on your calculator yet? Well, do them. As soon as you get 11 plus square root of 101 over 2, tell me what it is. Please. This one? No, everything together once you do it. Because that's going to be like 10 point something, and then plus the 11. 10.52? Now do this one 11 minus the square root of, of that. You should get point something. 10.52. For this one. Okay. Now do this one 11 minus the square root of 101. That's going to be less than 1. You divide by 2. There you go. Okay, now stop. We're going to interpret this for a little bit, all right? What is your x equal to? Well, I know it's 10.52. I know it's this. What does x mean? Who does x Time. stand for? Time. Doug's what? Time. Time to clean the whole house, yes? Firstly, is Doug going to clean the house in half an hour? No. Probably not, unless he's Superman. Is that that's I mean, he's, he's Doug. No, it's not going to happen. 10.5 <laughs> hours, does that seem a little more reasonable? Mm -hmm. Probably, yes. About half the time, or well, twice the time. That makes sense. Two people working, probably twice the time. About that. Well, also, let's look at it this way. Karen would be x minus 1, yeah? If you take this and do x minus 1, you have 0.5 minus 1. That's a negative half an hour. Is that going to work for us? Mm -hmm. And this solution really doesn't count for us. Really doesn't count. Now, Doug is 10.52 hours. How much is Karen going to be? How would you figure that out? Okay, so we come back over here. Doug was 10.52 hours. Karen was 1 minus that, 9.52 hours. Would you raise your hand if you're okay with this, this last example that we did? Guys on the left-hand side, you okay with that? Okay.